Welcome, my name is Shermie and it is so lovely to have you here. With this Sunday having the last fireworks show of the season, I thought now would be the perfect time to look back on all the previous fireworks shows and rank them to figure out is New Horizons really where you should be spending this last show of the season? So welcome to me ranking them. I'll be ranking them based on how the fireworks themselves look, of course, the prizes you can get, and music. Extra points will also be thrown around for originality or just any little thing that one happens to have that others don't that I really enjoy. And of course, nostalgia will play a part in this because that's part of video games. <laughs> and with that, let's go ahead and take a look! Number 5. City Folk Compared to other games, the fireworks in City Folk are pretty bland. As they reach the end of their explosion, I just keep expecting a little more flair, but then get nothing. I do enjoy how frequently they appear and that they even bother to redesign them from Wild World, but they end up not feeling all that magical. What they didn't bother changing from Wild World were the prizes, Roman candles and sparklers. And although these are fun, especially with better graphics, it's not nearly as exciting the second time around. Plus, you have to talk to Tornimer way more for each firework, and you can only get another if there are none in your pockets. With the exception of the first two. So prizes... meh. Music is the same as Wild World, so no extra points there, even though I really enjoy this song. All around, the show in City Folk is fine, but when you compare it to other games, it just comes off as being very bland. A lot of it's just copied from Wild World, so why not play Wild World? <laughs> but I do need to be honest with you, I got City Folk for Christmas, and by the time August came around, the disc reader on our Wii was broken, so I never got to this event back in the day. Leave me with zero nostalgia, and maybe that's why it comes in last for me. Number four, New Leaf. Yeah, I too was surprised when it ranked so low. So let's get into the why. For the fireworks, I think they did a pretty good job. I enjoy the variety of explosions and how they look. And after previous games just doing the same kind of firework over and over, it's fun to see this new take. The game also introduced custom patterns, which well, is such an amazing idea, like, that's awesome. But without invisible backgrounds on patterns, they don't look nearly as good as the ones in New Horizons. I know back in the day when I excitedly tried custom designs for the first time, I was overall pretty disappointed. Another downside is that they don't change up the colors for the four patterns they have, making the show feel really repetitive despite having such variety in the fireworks themselves. After watching the show for about a minute, you've basically seen it for an hour. There's no incentive to keep watching it each week. Then on top of that, having the fireworks all be so different ends up being a downside just a little bit because the show ends up feeling a little bit tacky. Almost like they just threw together whatever fireworks were around from the last four years with no concern for theming, <sighs> which is sad. <laughs> Basically, everything good going on gets cancelled out by, like, these little downsides. For the prizes, this game took a whole new approach, which I totally applaud. Unfortunately, this approach gets tedious fast. Here's how it works. You go to Red. You buy a cookie. You go to your inventory. You open the cookie, which for some reason has drop as the first choice. <laughs> Why? <laughs> If I eat it on accident, I can just buy another. Okay, okay. <laughs> so you actually eat it, then you take that ticket back to red and get a prize. And this could be fun. But here's the problem. Red gives you the whole introductory text every single time. There's no like, this is our first explanation, and now we're gonna shorten the text for you, cause you know what you to do, cause you're gonna have to do this 20 times! No, they use the same text every time and it's so freaking long! <sighs> and yes, I know Animal Crossing is known for being repetitive in the text, especially for events, but this is way worse than normal. And on top of that, if there were only like two, three, four prizes, this process would totally be fine. 
But no, there's 10, and it's a raffle. So it ends up being a lot of drudgery to get all 10 items. And on top of that, as much as the raffle is a fun idea, when you have such limited pocket space as New Leaf does, it's not so fun. You have to empty a lot more in the process of trying to get that prize you want. Okay, so then there's the question of, are the prizes even worth all the trouble of wading through all that freaking text? To which I actually have very mixed feelings. For the typical person, I would say half of them are a nope, not a zilch, not worth it. You see, these are the prizes. And if you don't know much about Nintendo's history, these basically look like junk. Like, when I say the name Love Tester, I, I was not <laughs> expecting this. But these are actually the electronic toys Nintendo made in the 70s that kind of bridged the gap between them originally selling playing cards and the now of selling video games. And that's cool. And maybe in Japan, most of these toys are super iconic and everyone of any age would recognize them on the spot. But for the casual international audience, it's not much to get excited over. <sighs> I know back in 2013, there weren't many thrills here when I got back to my house and saw these toys. <laughs> but granted, if I knew more Nintendo history, I probably would have enjoyed these. But I'm pretty sure at 90% of the international audience has no clue what these are. But I will note for the international audience, the lovely phone, the box figure, and the miniature car, those are great prizes. Have no problems with those. And two of the prizes you get from the cookies, which are also great, are Roman candles and sparklers. But <laughs> seeing that you get them from the cookies, you may have to wade through all these duds as opposed to having them on tap like in the last two games. But what is on tap this time around is the fountain firework, which is pretty sick. <laughs> Unfortunately, the graphics of the 3DS kind of limit the firework from achieving its true potential for magic as it does in New Horizons. Plus, with no convenient trash can, disposing of these can really add up. And side note, the bulb boppers are fun, but I don't really care for them after the festival ends. Then when it comes to the music, this soundtrack is my least favorite of all four festivals. It just, it's really goofy sounding with these little like, I guess bird sounds-ish. And it just puts me out of the mood. It reminds me of Mario Party, not Animal Crossing. So yeah, negative points on that. In the end, this festival has a lot of great stuff going on, but it gets really bogged down by a few not great that make the experience either a little more frustrating or less magical. <sighs> Sorry to be so critical, it's, it's so close to being fantastic. With just a little bit of polishing it could be there, which makes this all the more tragic. Number 3, Wild World. Does this deserve to be about New Leaf? And isn't it just a worse version of City Folks Festival? I don't know. To be honest, nostalgia might be pulling this guy ahead to an undeserved position, but let's get into talking my reasoning. The fireworks. So in Wild World, the top screen was dedicated to the sky, and for the most part, this was a bad call as it basically felt like filler. However, for the fireworks show, this was its time to shine, and boy does it. This is the one game where you can be running around doing whatever you want, wherever you want, and still enjoy the show. That alone boosts this show by a lot. I feel like in other games, I either had to choose between enjoying the show or blow it off to do whatever I wanted to get done. In Wild World, it's just like, hey, why not both? And that's beautiful. Also, as simple as the fireworks look, I, I like them a lot. The way they change colors as they twirl out of existence is incredibly mesmerizing. 
I actually want to sit and watch them and found myself doing so a lot more than in New Leaf and City Folk. For prizes, this was the first game with handheld fireworks, such as sparklers and Roman candles, so I have to give it a lot of points for originality. Even though later games may have better graphics, that first time you're handed a sparkler is really like no other. There's just so much magic as you light it, not knowing what's going to come next. I know I got a huge kick of it back in the day and stocked up on plenty for future use. One down vote I have for this show is the villagers. They don't clap, unlike every other game, or if they do, they do it a lot less frequently and I didn't catch it. You see them stare at the sky, but you don't feel much celebrating going down. But the music for Wild World is by far my favorite. It's just so Animal Crossing. The beat just gets you pumped for some fireworks and your hips can't help but shake a little bit. It's just so fun. So I can kind of understand why they reused it in City Folk. It's hard to top. Overall, I think this fireworks show is winning in how it displays the fireworks on the top screen and its overall originality. Number two, New Horizons. I am really impressed with the show in New Horizons. All the good of New Leaf continued in this game while all the bad was left behind. The fireworks look incredible. Ooh, yeah, that one's my favorite for sure. Ooh, that was fun. I'm There's good variety with the more simple and common fireworks changing colors. All the fireworks are cohesive in their differences. They also have the more stunning fireworks appear more rarely, which incentivizes you to watch longer and reap that sweet reward. And standing on that stagnant cliff, looking over the ocean is just so, oh, just so perfect. Plus, with the invisible backgrounds, the custom fireworks are so worth it. My only complaint is that the fireworks get cut off on the first and third cliffs, and I wish they reflected in the ocean so you could swim with the fireworks blooming all around you. Otherwise, I love how they look. The prizes have been fixed so hard compared to New Leaf. It's still a raffle, but you draw your ticket and then bam, get a prize. No fumbling around in your pockets. It's easy to do over and over until you get what you want. The prizes themselves are pretty fun. Balloons, fireworks, fans, bubbles, pinwheels, all good stuff really adds to the celebratory mood. Only complaint is that some are combustible and some aren't. So you end up getting tons of fans trying to get more fountain fireworks. However, with more pocket space, the drop box, and easier purchasing, this is less of a big deal. And might I add, the fountain fireworks are flaming. I love them so much. By far, best part of the festival, and I'm that's the hill I'm gonna die on right there. So prizes, good job. One area where the previously mentioned games really fail was the villagers. For some reason, they are scattered all over your town, with maybe one or two a town hall. In New Horizons, five is guaranteed. It makes the festival feel far more alive than a lonely turtle or Isabel and Red just kind of standing there. You feel like you're taking part in the community, which elevates the festive mood by leagues. I also love how they do more than clap. They encourage the fireworks, which is just hilarious. And they even light their own sparklers, which is all around great detail. Don't know why it wasn't there before. As for the music, I like it. It's kind of upbeat elevator <laughs> to me. So it's that spot where it's really enjoyable if you choose to listen to it, but it also easily fades into the background if you choose not to notice. Although now that I think about it, I feel like most of New Horizons music can be described that way. <laughs> All around, it's a good time. I recommend this festival. Good balance of everything. <laughs> the fireworks are beautiful. The prizes are fun. Participating in it is good. I recommend going to it. It's worth it. Number one, GameCube. Yeah, this is number one. And not because I'm some general cube head. There's just so much magic in this festival that later games failed to capture. Even though 
The fireworks have less variety. They bring a lot more joy as they are reflected on the lake. It feels like they are being shot up right above you instead of on some distant island. It also creates the appearance of the sky brimming with fireworks instead of only having one or two go off at a time. And the villagers brought a lot more to the festival than any other game after. You see them holding the little fans, so it feels like the prizes aren't just there for you. Then some walk around and sing with delight, which just makes you want to join in! <laughs> as much as New Horizons makes the villagers feel alive and participate in the festival, the GameCube version does it better. Plus, by having them enjoy it around a lake instead of looking towards the north of the island, you actually get to see their faces and them participating in the show instead of staring at their butt. Okay, so prizes. To get the downside out of the way with this game, Red offered three prizes, but he didn't offer them every year. Some years it was fans, others it was pinwheels, and other times it was balloons. However, he did offer a wide variety of these items, and you could pick what you wanted instead of relying on the trick of the draw. Just look at how many different fans and pinwheels there were. With fans, it was especially fun to buy them and see what you got. And in this game, you could release balloons, which is not only magical, but it would be really nice to have with the current raffle. And for pinwheels, if you ran around, they spun faster. I don't think that's the case in New Horizons. They just seem to kind of keep the same spinning. Overall, no other game has prizes getting me this excited. Also, I don't know if this affects anything, but Tortimer gives you a display rocket, and for some reason, he's just wandering around in the dark in the middle of nowhere. Super weird, but the rocket is fine. Like, Tortimer, we're having a party over here. Would you like to... Come join us. He might be a little too old for office, but that won't stop him from getting elected in two other towns. <laughs> no wonder he retired in New Leaf. He was, it was past time for that to happen for sure. <laughs> and for music, it definitely gives a different take. I feel like all the other songs are being all upbeat and exciting. Interestingly, the music here is very tranquil, which I think matches so well with reflecting off the lake. I like it a lot. As much as the villagers hype you up with their excitement in participating in the festival, the music kind of balances that out and makes you just contemplative, I guess? It's, a, it's weird for a fireworks show, but it works. I enjoy it, most definitely. Overall, the GameCube version of the festival, what really brings this game to the top for me is the atmosphere it creates. It feels so perfect, and there's really, it's hard to be disappointed in anything. It's just great. So there you have it, my thoughts and ranking for all five fireworks shows. Please, at me, because I would love to know what your thoughts are. Did I get something totally wrong? Did I miss something about some fireworks show that made it the best thing ever or the worst thing ever? Please, please tell me. <laughs> but back it up with reason, like I have hopefully done for my ranking. If you enjoy videos like these, please consider subscribing. Have yourself a most wonderful day and thank you for watching. Bye.